We will now hear from Evangelist Roxanne French. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Benjamina. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, God, and thank you, Pastor Allen and Benjamina Jenkins, for allowing me to preach from the Fresh Man of Ministry platform this morning. Thank you to all my church family, my family and friends that called in to support me and to hear a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, you are awesome in every way and the source of every good thing that I have. The life that I am building is a temple that belongs to you, Lord, and only you. I am asking for you to strengthen my spirit this morning so that I will be bold when speaking of your greatness. Guide my heart to speak truth at all times and empty this vessel of self and fill me with your word, your love, and your Holy Spirit. I believe you, and I believe in you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. This morning, uh, my text will be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 through 18. 9 through 18, 1 Samuel chapter 1. The title of my sermon this morning is Hannah's Blessings. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, the chapter speaks about a woman named Hannah. Hannah was barren, and she could not understand why God closed her womb. The Bible states that Elkanah was Hannah's husband who loved her dearly. However, he also had another wife named Panina who had no problems having babies. So the problem was with Hannah and not her husband. Hannah was not at peace in her own home because Panina mocked Hannah because she was barren and she couldn't have kids. And it caused so much anger and pain to Hannah, Hannah cried all the time and she stopped eating because She could not have a baby. She was sad and depressed, and Hannah's spirit was broken. We all have had many burdens that we fast and pray for up at night crying to the Lord to protect or save our loved ones. How many burdens have you taken to the Lord and then took it back and tried to fix it yourself? It didn't work. The Lord didn't need your help, and whether you realize it or not, everything happens in God's time. Hannah knew in order to have a baby, she would have to petition God for a blessing. Hannah and her husband Elkanah visited the tabernacle once a year, and this time Hannah went willing to surrender herself to God. She found herself broken before the Lord, and she confessed her inability to have babies, and she placed it in the Lord's hands. Hannah was alone when she prayed before God in the tabernacle with all of her might. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11, then she made a bow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on your maidservant, And remember me and not forget your maidservant and give me a male child. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. Hannah also prayed in a silent voice until she was spiritually drunk. Her husband thought she had been drinking. Real prayer is not made for human ears. When we earnestly pray, the Holy Spirit takes control. You should be in your prayer closet, your bedroom, your bathroom, wherever you feel comfortable praying to the Lord. God bless Hannah with a male son, just as she requested, and she named him Samuel. Hannah waited until she weaned Samuel off of her breast and took him to live in the tabernacle with Eli. Hannah kept her promise and was obedient and gave her son Samuel back to the Lord. 
She created robes for Samuel and checked to see if Samuel was living in God's will. Amen. Hannah had one real conversation with God, and her faith put her in a partnership with God. Mm. She was blessed, and the conversation led her to pray every day. And people began to notice that Hannah was about God's business. Can we see the God in you? In Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou earnest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. The scripture, Jeremiah 1, 5, gives confirmation of who you are. The scripture states you were sanctified in the womb even before you were born. Your life began before conception in the heart and mind of God. This means every human is crafted by God's almighty hand. He gives purpose to those who will seek him. Samuel was blessed in Hannah's womb. Every day Hannah prayed to God. She did not care what the neighbors said about her anymore. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, This is what Hannah prayed. My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowels of the mighty men are broken, and those who stumbled are girded with strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, and the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren was born with seven, and she who has many children has become feeble. The Lord kills and make alive. He brings down to the grave and he brings up. The Lord makes poor and he makes rich. He brings low and he lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord and he has set the world upon them. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked shall be solid in darkness. For by strength no man shall prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horns of his anointing. Amen. Amen. Prayer plays an important part of your destiny. There are times that people won't understand you because the answer lies in God's hands and not man's. You must pray to God and take your hands off of it. The Lord is the great physician who pours healing oil on all of our wounds. Any time your enemy knocks on your door and asks for prayer, tells you that they can see the God in you. God gives divine direction through prayer and to understand that his grace is sufficient. You must understand what prayer will do for you. In Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The blessing is given to you by God. God gives you the mindset to be saved and the desire to live holy and worship him. So if God started it, God will finish it. Let me give you an example of my daughter. 
she has been looking for a home during the pandemic for a year and a half. She has been outbidded on three or four of the houses. Two of the houses weren't fit to buy once she paid for the inspection. But I found one more house, and, and I said, bid on this house. It's been on the market for a while. He has it priced too high. When she went to see the property, she loved the property. It had everything that she wanted, a laundry on the first floor. She wanted an open kitchen. She didn't care about just having one bathroom. She had a backyard, which she wished for, and she had a patio in the front of the house. She said, Mom, this is the house that I have been waiting for. Well, God stepped in, and they changed that price to meet her pre-approval. So, Lord, we thank you for being there. See, a silent partner, nothing can separate you from your blessing but you. Nothing. Nothing. You can wash it. You can't wash it off, and nobody can take it away from you. What God has for you is for you. That house waited for my daughter to have enough faith to believe, enough faith to believe that God would bless her with an abundant blessing. The Bible is like Wi-Fi in a sense. The Bible is your connection to God. Uh, the Wi-Fi box is your connection to the Internet. And so... But you have to add a code to your cell phone, TV, your tablets, computers, all of, everything that's Wi-Fi capable. But an activation is required. The only code you need to activate your blessing is your faith. All you need is the faith to believe that God will do what he said he would do. Don't nobody have to activate nothing for you. All you have to do is start praying to God and believing in him for uh, uh, the blessings that will come before you. In Proverbs 10, 22, it states, the blessings of the Lord, it make us rich, and he added no sorrow with it. If you are willing, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you in the hidden Christ who you had locked up behind your problems, behind your fears, and your tears, will come forth, and you will see the power of Jesus do a mighty thing in your life. What a mighty God we serve. There is no situation that Jesus can't heal. If Jesus brought Lazarus from the dead, then stop feeling that he can help you. I know in some situations it looks dark and ugly, and sometimes it just doesn't feel right, but you got to give it to Jesus. What God is saying to people like you and people like me, as if we walk the walk and we talk the talk and we read and study your Bible and have strong faith, you will activate your blessings. The woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus. He poured his spirit into every area of her body where life had been drained away to nothing. God will pour into your life his Holy Spirit, and you will never be the same. I'll give you another example. I was preparing for a surgery. I went to the CVS pharmacy. I had a list of things to pick up. But then when she said the price, the, I, I knew how much the things cost, but the price was low. When I got to the car, I looked and I checked everything. The most important part of the prep, she did not charge me for said, oh, no, I'm not feeling conviction. That feeling will come over you. I got out of that car. I walked back inside and told the lady, look, you did not charge me for this. She looked at me and said, nobody has ever came in here and said that to me. I said, well, please charge me for this and give me my receipt. When I had the surgery, the doctors came in afterwards and said, we didn't know if we was going to see you again. 
We lost you on the table, but I know it was the fact that I took that money back in there for that prep, that God knew that I was walking with him and not walking in the world, and he saved my life. See, God is waiting to see himself in you. Don't let anyone break your spirit or block your blessing. Stand on God's promise. If you are free in your spirit, then you ought to act like it. If you are free in your spirit, then you ought to live like it. And if you are free in your spirit, then you ought to speak like it. Get out of the flesh and into the spirit. It is time to get into the overflow. Surrender anything that is not of God. Stop holding back and waiting on empty promises. Jesus is real. He is real in my life, and he is real in yours. He is God to everyone, whether you seek him or not. For those who seek him, he will give you purpose. To those who do not know him or live for what the world has to offer is missing their blessing. In John 15, 7, it says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. See, God planted the seed of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Every time you pray to God, he will hear you. But you must abide in him so he can give you the power to move forward. Hannah was anointed by God the moment she surrendered her will to God. God. Hannah's faith was strong, and she believed that God was the only one who could help her. We must learn to lay all of our desires on to altar before God and be willing to wait for his answer. Now, let me give you some power points of prayer. The first one, prayer acknowledges that there is a power stronger than you, the power to handle any of your concerns, the Holy Spirit. Number two, prayer strengthens our intimacy with God so that we can come boldly before the throne of grace to receive what God has for you. Number three, prayer will anchor, will help to anchor your faith in God. Number four, prayer and reading God's word is the only key you need to reach him. And the main one is number five. Prayer does not change God. It changes you, and I'll repeat that. Prayer does not change God. It changes you. And in order for you to know who he is, God is, in John 1 and 3, the creator of the word. In Exodus 6 and 3, he is God Almighty. In Psalm 16, 10, he is the Holy One. In Isaiah 9, 6, He is the everlasting father. In Galatians 3, 5, he is a miracle worker. And in Revelations 1 and 8, he is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And in closing, you must learn to initiate your blessing. If you never ask for anything, you will never receive anything. You must learn to enforce the changes you want to see in your life. If Hannah had not prayed in the spirit for a child, which was her faith, and then slept with Alcanon, which was her work, then there would never have been a Samuel, which is the fruit of her labor, and her prayer answered. Hannah now has three boys, two girls, besides Samuel. In Revelation 5 and 12, it says, Uh, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and most of all, blessings. At the end of your will is the beginning of God's will. Thank you for taking the time to listen. And remember, Joe Biden was in the political arena for 47 years before God answered his prayer to make him the president of the United States. We must learn to wait on the Lord. 
he does give you the desires of your heart. I'm Minister Roxanne French, and I thank you for taking the time to listen to Hannah's Blessings. Thank you for listening. Join us next time, and remember to subscribe, Fresh Manna Ministries. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Number 6, verse 24 to 26. God bless you. Have a great day.